What's up, everybody? So we are back today, and today we're talking about jigs, and jigs specifically for the fiber. So there's a couple of different jigs out there, different ways to do things, and there is no one way to skin a cat on this one. There, You could do it so many different ways. So hang on tight, and let's get into it. So this video is sponsored by OM Tech. Here you can see their long lineup of their fiber lasers, starting with the splits over into the MOPAs with a variety of different power wattages and finishing it out with some of the other split models. They also have a lot of accessories for these machines, lenses, rotaries, and obviously the CO2 machines, which range from desktop all the way to the 150 watt, which is like a small truck. So enough about that, let's get back to the video. All right, so I got a variety of examples for you on what I do in my different workflows for different products to, to use jigs. And really the idea and the reason that you would use a jig is for alignment, and repeatability. So alignment, it could be as simple as having, you know, for for this example, one coin. We're gonna do one coin and we want that coin to be in the same spot every time. And that's all I use my machine for. So I set it up so I can always have that coin in the same spot. No questions asked, no alignment, cutting out all that time in changeover for the next coin. Um, if you're doing mass quantities of coins and they're all the same, Maybe you want to have something set up so you could do four coins at a time. So that way it runs from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. So let's start with that. We'll talk about that example right now. So let's take a look at the fiber. Um, so you'll actually see I've marked these two holes here. Um, and what I do occasionally is I'll go ahead and just throw in a couple of screws, drop these in here. And for a one coin setup, this is a perfect backstop. Put that in right there. And all you do is then go into Lightburn or EasyCAD. You shoot down your red uh, red dot and throw a line around there so that way you can line it up with the coin. And then it's in the same spot every time. You can save that as a template and throw the design in there, hit it, and go. Um, so that's a quick, easy one. So like when I'm done with this coin, move that out of the way, throw this coin in there, ready to go, and then on to the next one. Uh, if you wanted to take this one step further, you can actually see that two coins can sit in here and not actually touch each other. So you could set two coins there back to back, run both of them, pull those out, and then throw in two more and get those in there. So that way you're doing two coins. So let's change this out and we'll use some of these bars and show you another way that you could set it up. All right, so now I've got this set up so that way it's kind of a T in here with the bars. Same thing, you could throw a coin here, throw a coin here, bzz, bzz, done. Um, ideally, you want to try and get this as centered below the lens as possible. So making sure that this falls as close to the center of the bed. Um, so that way you're getting as most power as you possibly can as you are hitting this with the laser. So that's another option. And then now let's look at maybe like a four coin variation. And we're gonna use one of my favorite things for the fiber and that's Legos. So hang on tight, let's swap this over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here is a quick and simple setup with Legos. So first off, I got this mat from the dollar store. These are not like your high end Legos uh, you know, that come in this big, large kit. This is legit from the dollar store. It's a mat and I line it up with the front here and then line it up over on the side and just try and get it again, kind of centered below the lens, left to right, and then find a spot that is kind of centered right there front to back. So then I use these bars, tighten them down, hold the mat down. So you can see now if I go throw a coin in there, throw a coin in there, throw a coin in here, and my last one right there. I could essentially go from one coin to the next and just hit these and it, then batch out another one, get out another one, get out another one. So when I'm doing bulk coins, this is an awesome way to do it. One thing to be aware of with Legos though, if the product you are using is going to get hot, it will 
start to melt the Lego mat. So keep that in mind, um, like coins, if you're running them for a long time, really trying to get deep, the coins will get hot and they'll start to kind of like melt down into the mat. So be aware of that, just know that that can happen. But Legos, it's super versatile because you can literally build up whatever jig that you want. So I'm gonna go grab a, a wallet, a minimalist wallet, and I'll show you how I can build up a jig to make those easy change outs for a wallet. Okay, so for minimalist wallets, they can be a pain in the butt because of this clip. Um, if you're wanting to engrave this side and you just set it down, obviously this side could be in focus and this is gonna be out of focus. Or this is in focus and this is out of focus because it does not sit flat. You can see the clip is up here, it makes it higher, this side's lower. Um, so this obviously becomes a problem. But with Legos, we literally can just build up whatever we want. So this is nothing fancy, it's nothing pretty. But I've got a backstop for the bottom of the wallet and for the side of the wallet. So literally, I can go take the wallet, put it right in here. It's in the same spot every single time when I throw a wallet in there. So literally, I could hit this wallet, engrave it, pull it out, drop in another one, make sure it's all the way hitting the two sides, pull it out, do another one. It's super simple, super easy. And I mean, look how fast that changeover is. Like you have, you get the file aligned with the actual wallet and it is just change over, change over, change over, change over. Um, especially if you are doing some kind of batch. If you're doing the same logo over and over and over again, this makes things so easy. Um, so Legos, and obviously like you see, we just grabbed something and we threw it in here. You can use the Legos for so many different products because you can literally build what it is that you need. And like I said, I bought the mat, that was a dollar or in today's economy, like a dollar fifty. And then I bought all of these Lego pieces. If you need more, <clears throat> go buy more. But yeah, so dollar fifty, dollar fifty, if you need more, another dollar fifty. So it's not a very expensive venture to have this kind of jig. And you can use it for a wide variety of things. I mean, I've got a knife sitting right here. We could do something very similar. You've got a clip there for the knife. So if we built up a platform, so that way it always sat in the same spot, you know, whatever it is, hey, you know, making it so that way that sits there. We could even just add a block over here. Throw one there. Maybe a little bit farther up. There we go. There's a platform for that. And look, it actually sits right in there and it's the same spot every time. So if I had a bunch of these same knives that I needed to do and I could build something that had like a side for it to register off of, it's in the same spot every single time. You're gonna get perfect engravings and fast changeovers. All right, so those are the basic things that I use in my workflows right now. Um, I have a variety of products that I do on my machine. And so I like to have the ability to kind of build and make my own jigs. Um, let's talk conceptually about some of the others and I'll share some links down in the description of these other types of jigs. Um, if you're like me and you have other lasers in your shop, like a CO2 laser, you can laser cut a jig. You can, you know, so say for coins, for instance, you could go use some plywood and you could cut out jigs, cut the holes, so that way you can screw it down. Like you can make your own jigs. Um, if you have a 3D printer, you can design and print your own jigs. For example, the wallet. I'll drop a couple links of different examples of wallets that uh, have jigs that are selling on Etsy right now. So that way you can get an idea of what you may want for your projects. And if wallets are your thing, Maybe there's already a jig out there for you. You can buy it and just run with it. Uh, if knives are your thing, maybe there's a jig out there for your specific knife. You can just run with it. I know that there's a lot of different jigs out there as well for uh, JDS products, like their tumblers. There's lots of jigs already out there. So if you're not into making jigs or want it to just be the same every single time, not have to think about it, you can buy them. Jigs are super helpful and honestly, most of the time, they pay for themselves just in the time savings on changeover.
Um, so one of the last things that I want to talk about, and it's something that I want to do, haven't done it yet, but Lightburn just recently added the capability of repeat mark. So repeat mark, what it does is it uses a rotary table, or you can use a regular rotary, stand it up on its end like this, and add a table to it. It gives you the option, so that way you can actually turn that table a specific degree and repeat the mark that you're doing over and over again. So you could basically fill up a table, you know, say of 12 items, and have it turn, 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 all the way through 12, and repeat the same mark on every single one of them. So super awesome feature, gonna be awesome for me here in the future, and I'll make another video on that when I build that. But for the meantime, <clears throat> until mine is up, I'll replace it when it's there, but I'll put a card here so that way you can see another example that's from Laser Everything. But that's Jigs, that's how I use them in my workflow. If you liked this video and it was helpful, please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.